Yet, if I should get mad, and it's Connecticut, and snow, and she gives birth to a child, and I am sleepless, worn, up at nights, head bowed against a quiet window to pass behind me, finding myself in the most common of situations, a trembling man, knowledge with responsibility, not twig smear, nor Roman coin soup. Oh, what would that be like? Surely I'd give it for a nipple, a rubber, a tacitus, for a rattle, a bag of broken back records, tack della Francesca all over its crib, so the Greek alphabet on its bib, and build for its playpen a roofless heart No, I doubt I'd be that kind of father. Not moon, not snow, no quiet window. But hot, smelly, tight New York City, seven flights up, roaches and rats in the walls, a fat Reichian wife screeching over potatoes. Get a dog! Fire, no! <laughs> I'm in love with Batman, and the neighbors all toothless and dry-haired like those hag masses of the 18th century, all wanting to come in and watch TV, and the landlord wants his rent. Grocery store, Blue Cross, gas and electric, night to Columbus. Yeah. Impossible to lie back and dream. Telephone, snow, ghost parking. No, I should not get married. I should never get married. But imagine if I were married to a beautiful, sophisticated woman, tall and pale. We don't die. 
we go to the galaxy in Andromeda. And he described it, one <laughs> tedious letter at a time. Andromeda, a place of immense and unrelievable serenity, a bland and sexless, suffocating place with not a single wild kidney. I don't believe it. Like Shelley, Stuart Perkoff was cremated. I picture his stubby hands curling into fists. The blackened body bends into a sort of boxer's crouch. Stuart's head, beard gone in a puff at the first blast of flame, eyes bubbling that had once perhaps seen into me, skull fragile as an ox egg, crumbling, flaming bits of cerebellar tissue, ash of synapses across which had once flashed poetry, some rather fine poetry, smoke, white smoke rising, but Stuart dead, and the rest, I don't believe it, won't have it, not for a moment. If he, or if even the poor and indifferent poets are always floating away to Andromeda, what is left remarkable here beneath the visiting moon? So, against all logic, I say, the alphabetic professor lies. <laughs> they are here. I say the ghost of the poets squat in doleful rows on telephone wires. They crowd the fence rails, weigh down the branches of the trees. Glumly they grub for pennies in the dirty sand high up at the heads of half-lost rivers. Some flicker like sad fireflies flashing dimly only when we blink. But they are here. They are sad sadder perhaps than when they lived but not in andromeda damn ouija and the truth they are here do you know what i mean even the barrel of my pen is full of the ghosts of uncouth poets <laughs> in case you wondered they are the wild kidney they are the bitter crackling sound i hear when philomene brushes her hair in case you wondered they are the small transparent parasols all of us stroll beneath. <laughs> <laughs>